Back to Speedway and from Alching in West Germany this afternoon, the World Team Championship final. England are the defending champions. We won the title last year in Poland. But this year, up against a really formidable lineup, Denmark skippered by Olli Olsen, who beat us in the Intercontinental Final at Kings Lynn, West Germany, the host country, and Russia. The English team, Dave Jessup, the skipper, Chris Morton, Kenny Carter, and John Davis, with the reserve, Gordon Kennett. It is a team event, but it relies very much on individual skills, because in each of the 16 heats, there's one rider from each country. Our commentator in West Germany, Dave Lanning. So a swelteringly hot afternoon here at Olching, just south of Munich for the 1981 World Team Championship final. The title, of course, that England have won four times in the past seven years, but this afternoon they have their backs to the wall. Without Michael Lee, the world individual champion who is out with a respiratory complaint, without, of course, Peter Collins, such a feature of cup-winning squads in the past for England, and they face the rampaging Danes who beat them in the Intercontinental Final at King's Lynn, plus, of course, the dangerous potent West Germans on their own track and the mysterious but still slightly menacing Russians. So the English boys looking to have a hot afternoon in prospect in more ways than one. The lineup for Heat 1, Egon Müller, the number one German and many times world long track champion. He'll be on the inside in the red helmet colour. Next to him, Dave Jessup. So much hinges on Jessup's early form to inspire the Englishman here in Bavaria. With three, we'll have the little-known Russian Viktor Korniev. And on the outside for Denmark, and of course Denmark are slight anti-post favourites, we'll have Hans Nielsen. There's Jessup just moving into grid number two. Remember, of course, it's four laps of this 400-meter circuit. And we have 16 races to decide the world team champions in 1981. There's the Russian, and here is Hans Nielsen on form, recent winner of the Embassy International at Wimbledon, a world individual finalist. Hans Nielsen, still a young man, still only 21, one of the dark horses for the individual championship. So the line-up for Heat 1, Müller on the inside, Jessup's in grid 2, in grid 3 is Victor Korneff, and on the outside we have Hans Nelson. Remember, three points for a win, two for a second, one for a third, no score for a last place. You really can ill afford to finish last in a world championship. And away they go, it looks like Jessup has got the run up to the first corner. Nielsen was in trouble on the outside. Jessup leads it, second place is Müller, third around the outside, it's a Russian corner. But it's Jessup in front and the Dane, Nielsen at the back after a terrible start. Nielsen now bursting through on the inside of the Russian corner, so he's into third place and Müller's chasing hard after Dave Jessup. There is the battle, and Egon Müller on home dirt looks a lively handful. Jessup and Müller, and Müller trying to wind it all around the outside. And Nielsen is back in touch, and this is a lively start to Heat 1. And Jessup has got to go for his life as Nielsen now comes up on the inside of Müller. And the first three, there's not very much to choose between first and third. As Nielsen now moves through on the inside and Jessup has stopped. Jessup's in trouble. Jessup's machine has faltered and cut. And that is a disastrously unlucky start for the Englishman. Nielsen has come from last to first here in heat one. And Jessup is way at the back. His engine stopped there about this corner on the last lap. Nielsen holds on to win it. Three points for Denmark. Two for West Germany. One for the Russians. And Dave Jessup, who led. And there is Jessup limping over the line. And that really is a terrible start. And it was unlucky too for the Englishman. And the rider delaying the start of heat number four is the Russian captain, Valery Gordeev, an old campaigner. We've seen him several times in individual and team cup events. Here's Kenny Carter for England, 20 years old. Kenny in his first World Cup final. A lot of responsibility on his shoulders because Denmark have made a tremendous start. Grid two has Valerie Gordea. Grid three is young Tommy Nansen. Again, only 19 years old on the outside here for West Germany. And he could be a threat. George Hatt. Here we go, heat four. And from the outside it is Hack, and from the inside it is Carter, and Hack leads it, Carter is second, third is Nudson, and now the battle is on between the German in and 
Kenny Carter. Hack made the game from the outside. Carter's chasing hard. Knudsen's back in third place. And now can Kenny Carter get up for England? And it really is getting tight there, and Carter will give nothing away as Hack locks up, and that Knudsen is up in contention around the outside of Kenny Carter for England, and here come the Danes. Carter holds off, Hack still in front. He thought the Germans might prove a bit of a handful. But Carter roaring through on the inside. It's getting awfully tight, and now Carter makes his movement. Carter moves through on the inside, but Hack is not finished, and they're absolutely shoulder to shoulder. And this is a tremendous heat for And it's terribly tight, really is. Hack moved across in front of Carter, blocked his move. Carter will now try the outside. So I don't think there's much drive there. And we've had four laps of classic speed, but now Carter again makes the inside run. Can he hold on for England? Carter inside, Hack on the outside. I think Nelson's going to go through as well. He has. So over the line is Carter for England. Second was Knudsen for Denmark and George Hack from Germany, who made the running the whole way was pitched into third place and the German crowd just can't believe it. We've had four races and there you can see the leaderboard. The Soviet Union back out of contention as we rather thought they might be on two points. England battling hard after a disappointing start on seven points. Denmark on ten, the clear leaders. And the West Germans who we thought might be a lively handful on home dirt on five points. That's Kenny Carter. Yorkshire type, what a flying start to his World Cup debut he made. He really rode with all these typical Yorkshire grit to get up past George Hack, his rival from Germany, and going through left a hole for the Dane, Tommy Knudsen as well. Tremendous start for Kenny Carter, we know this lad's battle. Chris Morton, little lad from Bellevue, Manchester, waiting calmly enough for the start of Heat 5, just allowing the heat and pressure off the clutch, raising the back wheel. There's Carl Mayer. He's a good rider, this German. Won the World Long Track Championship and looked uh, pretty smartly in British League Speedway. He's on the inside. Carl Mayer from West Germany. The German's back on five points overall. Grid two has Tommy Nudson. Grid three, Chris Morton on the outside. Victor Cornier for the Soviet Union. And away they go. And it's Nudson who shows in front for Denmark. Nudson leads it. Second place coming around the outside is Chris Morton. Morton goes around the outside and Mayer finds some drive from somewhere there as they all tightened up for second and third place but Knudsen from Denmark he was the rider who hit the trap second place now Mayer Chris Morton with a fair bit of work to do back in third place well, as you can see the dust is starting to fly it is very, very dry and sweltery out there. It can't be too much fun being in the crowd as these riders go roaring by. Here is Knudsen for Denmark, and he is a bright young man, and Morton is making his big effort for second place, and he's gone around the outside of Carl Mayer. Could be a valuable point for England, as the big two, as we rather expected, begin to get their teeth into this World Cup final. Knudsen up front. Morton is really getting it all wound on now. And he's made up an awful lot of ground on Tommy Knudsen. And we just wonder if he's left his effort a bit too late. They're into the last lap, 400 metres around here. And Morton is still battling. And he might just catch Knudsen. And Knudsen is suddenly aware of him. Moves over, blocks his line. A win for Denmark. Second, Morton. Good effort from the Bellevue Manchester rider. And third, Carl Meyer from West Germany. Well, they're packed in shoulder to shoulder here in Alching. There's not a lot of... Uh, cover but on an afternoon like this uh, I'm quite sure these fans are enjoying the sunshine. He takes the lineup. George Gilgen Reiner, experienced German campaigner, 27 year old from the back on the inside. Next to him in the blue helmet colour will be Hans Hill from Denmark. A somewhat fortuitous winner first time out. Grid 3 has Valerie Gordea from the Soviet Union on the outside. John Davis for England. England points from Davis in heat eight. There are five adrift to the Danes. Nielsen is a Dutter campaigner who gives nothing away. He's in grid two. Davis it is who is delaying this time. He got squeezed out in his first ride. He'll be anxious to make a better break this time. Heat eight. Oh, they seem to be waiting an awful long time for the referee to press the button. They're away this time. And Davis from the outside and Nielsen from the inside and Nielsen has got the drop on him. 
or that Jürgen Reimer has shown for West Germany too on the inside. So it is now a real battle with Nielsen going around the outside and Davis going under. Jürgen Reiner very hard indeed. So Denmark, England, Germany, that's the way they line up here in Heat 8. And now Davis must really chase hard and try to find a passage somehow past Hans Nielsen. And Nielsen is not the kind of guy who normally leaves much room for speculation. Nelson who leads, Davis chase, 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 in third place still is Gilgen Reiner. It's a rough treatment on the first lap there. And well, it's getting so dusty out there. It's difficult to, for the crowd to see what's going on. And also the riders, but John Davis it is who's still making the effort for England in second place. And Nelson seems to be countering his every move. Clever tactical right by the Dane, and Davis is trying so very, very hard. He's tried inside around, bursting through on the inside, and I think he might just get up here, and Nilsson holds him out. Tremendous piece of action, England and Denmark. Nilsson outside, Davis on the inside. He almost squeezed by there, but the Dane is going to hold on. Nilsson wins it, Davis is second, the German Gilgen Ryder was third, but another superb race in the dust, and John Davis really rode his heart out for the Lions there. And so midway through this World Team Cup final and some anxiety in the England camp, they're now six points behind Denmark on 20, England on 14, the West Germans still breathing down England's neck on 12 and the USSR out of touch on two. England have already surrendered one world crown this year, the world pairs to the Americans and have got to get things together and make their big effort in the second half of the programme. Heat nine with Denmark really now just needing to hold on and England and indeed Germany needing to produce something very special to catch them. Heat 9 has John Davis on the inside for England. There's JD, who's ridden awfully hard for three points in his first two rides. The Russians have really trailed quite disastrously, bringing their reserve Anatoly Maximov in blue for Valery Kordeev. George Hack there, and there's the team manager for Germany, Manfred Poschenreiter. George Hack, it is in white, and on the outside, the great Dane, Ole Olsen. Also with a second and a third from his two rides. So, heat number nine. Davis on the inside. First time he's been on one of the inside grids. Olsen on the outside. Those perhaps are the two to watch for, though. Hack has been lively from grid number three. And away they go. And it's Davis who shows in front. Davis leads it. Hack is in second place. They tighten up the Russian. Maximov, here's a surprise around the outside. And Russia leads it. Olsen now predicts some pressure on Davis. But uh, the Russians brought in their reserve. And it turns out he might be a bit of a trump card. Because Olsen looks as though he's gone around the outside of Davis as they tear in to the bottom corner. And Davis has been squeezed out. And he's getting tight. And Olsen has come from third to first. And John Davis for England has gone to the back. Although he's moving inside Hack here the third place is getting a bit hectic out there here's Olsen's ridden a beautiful race must be said and the Russian has been a surprise packet in second place Olsen carving up the pit corner as Davis now must make his effort to get up past this shop merchant Russian this is lap three it's the third corner this has definitely been the liveliest Russian of them all the track has got a bit wet and sticky seem to be getting filled in as the battle continues for second place and Davis has moved through. This is Olsen, a long way in front at the back. All the drama's been happening. We'll see in a moment that John Davis has moved into second place and right on the line there, Hack's got up as well. Oh, that was an amazing one. And with nine races completed, there is the pit scoreboard. You can see Denmark on 23 points, stretching their lead. And it must be said, they're going to take a fair bit of catching now. Eric Gunderson unbeaten for the Danes in two starts, coming into heat 12. There is the lineup for heat 12. Eric Gunderson on the inside. Chris Morton, as always, has been a body battler for the Brits. He's on five points and wins the second heat on Muller. The most successful of the West Germans that we thought he might be with a win in second place so far. And Valerie Gordea on the outside for Russia without a score yet. Gunderson then, the Danes really just need to play safe now and surely the world crown will be theirs for the second time. England in fact under a fair bit of pressure from the West Germans for second place now as we come into Heat 12 and uh, Egon Muller, who 
really can get the bit between his teeth when he's in the mood in the third grid in white helmet colour here. Russia, Valery Gordeyev on the outside. We remember him once being banned from a world final after the found he was using an illegal additive in his fuel. Team 12, Goodlison impatient to get things moving and away they go and Goodlison it is who shows. Goodlison leads it, second place is Morton. Where is Muller? Muller's coming round the outside. He's gone past Morton and he has gone past Goodlison. And now he's kicking off. And the West German crowd are loving every minute of this. So long an unfashionable nation in World Speedway. And they're showing the big guns the way home. And Muller has got Eric Gunderson behind him. And Chris Morton is losing touch in third place. And it really has been the most disappointing afternoon for England. It must be said they're under strength, we know. But we rather felt they might get up and beat the Germans. Looks like uh, the jubilant and buoyant home nation are going to perhaps finish in second place. A marvellous achievement, although Morton has got back up onto the back wheel of Goodison. Here is the battle into the last lap now, and Chris Morton has gone past Goodison. And now he's going after Mayer and uh, Muller. And just when we thought all might be lost, Morton has produced his party piece. Oh, what a super ride! Just when we thought that the lion's tail was down, Chris Morton has produced his party piece around the outside of Gunderson, now around the outside of Muller, and he wins Heat 12. And at long last, the Union Jacks are hoist proudly around Alching. A really superb ride from Chrissy Morton. Just when it looked that all was lost, he's given the Lions something to fight for. Well, let's just have a look at that incredible last lap from Chris Morton again. Suddenly has gained ground on Eric Gunderson. He sails around the outside of him with everything going and then picks up on Egon Muller. I don't think the West German was looking for him at all. And around the outside again in a really perfect piece of timed overtaking. Heat 13, the last quarter of the 1981 World Cup final. And the Danes, who have been in front throughout, now looking for just five points from these last four races for their second success in these championships. Tommy Knudsen, it will be, who will anchor their hopes here in Heat 13. And really, if he wins this one, it will surely all be over by the shade. He's got Egan Müller out there to contend with on the outside from West Germany. As always, an accomplished performer, lifts himself and his riding ability in front of his home crowd, who idolised this young man. He's from Kiel, a bit of a pop star, Egon Müller. He's been in the German charts on several occasions. Now it's not pop records, it's track records he's chasing in Heat 13. With Nutten on the inside, John Davis. He's got five points. He's been a bonnie battler, hadn't had much luck for England. Grid three has Viktor Kuznetsov from the Soviet Union. And there is Müller, who really... Uh, has given the crowd plenty to leap upon their toes for here in Olching this afternoon. So, Heat 13, Dutton on the inside, Davis grid two, because Nets off grid three, the outside, the home idol, Egon Muller. Heat number 13. And who will it be who breaks? In fact, it was because Netsov from grid three who gets away, though Davis has shifted him over there. Dutton's got a clear run on the inside. He leads now with Muller in second place. Davis is third, and uh, the Denmark on their feet now as Knudsen goes for home and though he has got Egon Müller buzzing most energetically on his back wheel and Davis is doing it as well now. And Davis has shoved them over out the way or has he? In the melee it is Müller who shows in front and Knudsen's going after him and again we're getting something of a classic here. Müller now clearly showing second place is Tommy Knudsen, third place is Davis being dropped. And again, this partisan Bavarian crowd are on their feet, they're shouting and raving at home. Knudsen is standing on those ceremonies, he's boring inside Müller. And we really have a battle on. We have lost John Davis with trouble at the back, the battle still is joined, and they're swapping positions on every lap. And it's terribly close in there in heat 13. Knudsen on the outside. Muller on the inside, they're absolutely locked together. Who's it going to be over the line? It is going to be Egon Muller waving to the crowd. It really was a fine piece of speedway action. The crowd absolutely loving every minute of it. 
Well, just look at this action again in replay. This is the last corner. You can see Muller just gets his nose in front. Lutzen had ridden him hard the whole way. And as they come up to the checkered flag, there goes Egon Muller saluting the crowd before he's even got over the line. But it was a splendid effort. Heat 14. And here, to all intents and purposes, the Danes could wrap up the world title. They only really need a third place to put themselves in an uncatchable position. And they've got Eric Gunderson in the blue helmet colour to try and wrap it up for them. On the inside, though, the, the Russian, that's Viktor Korniev. Grid two has Gunderson. Grid three has George Gilgen Ryder on the outside. England's battling young Kenny Carter. Here we go for heat 14. And the tapes were very nearly broken by the Russian. Referee Christa Bergstrom from Sweden. Time to resettle. Here we go again. And Carter has had a fire from the outside, and so too has Gunderson from grid two. So Carter comes sweeping around the outside. He leads it. Gunderson is second. In third place is Gilgen Reiner. But that really was a pitcher start from Kenny Carter. Carter leads. Second place, Gunderson. Third is Gilgen Reiner. And the Danes, well, I don't think they'll be too concerned about this. It's good news for England because the Germans had got their nose in front of them for second place. Second place here will be enough for Denmark. We have lost the rider in red, the Russian, that's Korneyev. Nobody really is too concerned about that because the Russians are way out of touch. There he is. But if they stay as they are, and it doesn't look as though there is going to be any major change short of some kind of mechanical defect, this really should be enough for the Danes. Gunderson sitting back, Carter leading, third place the German. But Kenny Carter, who made that tremendous start from the outside, came roaring around the boards, is going to win Heat 14. But that effort has just come a bit too late for the English side because the Danes for that second place as Gunderson goes over the line, have now wrapped up their second World Cup success and they're going to be waiting for him back at the pit gate. And down on the pit gate, up in the air goes Gunderson in the traditional victory salute and the Danes have won their second World Cup. They're overjoyed as well they might be, but in, in all honesty, they have looked superb and supreme from the very start of this World Cup final. Well, that was how it stayed. Victory for the Danes, and England managed to hang on in the two remaining heats to beat the West Germans by one point. The final result, Denmark 36 points, England 29 points, West Germany 28, Russia 3. Well, Ollie Olsen, you've had a lot of big moments in your career. That's must be a real sweet one for you as well. Tremendous, Dave. It was... Um... It actually started out in England in the Intercontinental Final when we came from third and on to uh, winning the meeting there. And I was thrown up in the air when I won the last seat. It was just tremendous. And I really hoped that we could do it. And we, we did it here. It was great. I mean, this is a very young side, Ollie. It must be a very proud moment for you because really they're all your boys. You've developed a whole lot of them, haven't you? Well, they're, they're developed in Denmark, but of course uh, I like but you're to the be, father well, figure. a bit of part of it. But we have got a great team here and uh, some great boys and we've got a great uh, DMU behind us, the feder our federation. We've got a great uh, team manager, so tremendous, and that makes a whole team. But now, you know, you've got Hans Nielsen and Eric Gunderson are only 21, Tommy Knudsen's only 19. What's the, the limit of their achievements? How far can they go? Well, very difficult, Dave, but uh, the way they're going at the moment, I think they'll go a long way.